Have you seen the Riker tool bag before? Their Instagram page reached out to me and sent me this tool roll here and I used it for a couple of months as a service bag and I absolutely loved it. It took a beating, I ran it through a lot of service calls, condenser installs, and it was a great bag. So I keep a rigid box in my truck and I keep the Riker bag, the Riker roll up bag, in there. This is exactly how I set it up while I'm on the road. In this pocket, I keep wrenches like the Kniepex, the Raptor, paired from Channel Lock, that kind of stuff. In this pocket, I keep some electrical tools. Nothing crazy, just the basics, try and keep it light. And up here, I keep linemans, they fit better in this pocket. Multi screwdriver, bought just for this bag. A pair of dykes, can't go without. I don't have any wrenches in here. If you have a good brand you think I should keep in here, let me know down in the comments. Right here, I keep some pocket knives, a uh, adapter for my impact wrench. Over here, I keep Teflon tape and some propane fittings with some wire nuts. And that's pretty much what I run in the bag while it's in my personal truck. This bag is extremely tough and I really, really like the product. So when Riker released their new bag, which is designed to be an actual technician tote, of course, I ordered it from them and I wanna set it up for the next week change over from my Vito over to the Riker bag. So what I'm saying is everything that's in my Vito Pro Pack MTC is going to go into this Riker bag for the next week and I'm going to try and put as much abuse into this bag as I have into that one over the last seven years now. It is officially time to switch out of the trusty Vito over to the Riker. Now this is just kind of like a basic bag, kind of like your Husky bag, but does have a really nice finish on it and I like this company so let's give it a shot. So judging of the height between these two bags I'm pretty sure things like the Milwaukee driver and honestly the Klein lineman pliers are not going to fit height wise inside this bag. Obviously that is too big and come here that is too big that's not going to work. Yeah that's not going to work. So looks like we're going to have to lay some of these down just to get them into the bag and start off with that. So really tall items are going to go into the bottom. What about this driver? Yeah, that's too big too. So that is also going to lay down there. Let's just start taking stuff out. We have, I don't need that right now. We got the dikes, thermostat screwdriver, strippers, these two nut drivers, let's grab those. Bikes gonna fit there. Help make sure that pocket's all the way open. Let's go. Strippers there. If we need to move it, we will. So like if I'm constantly staring at the bag, I kind of want to see this. I really don't want to lose this. Let's make it short. Let's tuck it in. Sorry guys, I just added some light to this. All right. Solder sticks. These can stay in here. Soak in the sandpaper. Do I have anything down here? Yes. I'm gonna need this. Go over there. Channel, little channel locks can go right here. Deeper service wrench. Sometimes you forget everything that you have in a bag until you do something like this. Okay. Deeper tool, service wrench. This can go right up front. All right, this obviously is not going to be able to fit. All right, we'll go over there. This wrench, definitely. Hmm. All right, this is one I use most of the time anyways. Got to go in a good spot. You can go right there. Looking pretty good. Nice. Oh yeah, that ain't gonna fit. This is probably going the bottom anyway. Most of the stuff I, that's down here, I don't use that often. All right, big boy. You can go uh, right here. Let's start you off right there. See if you can move later. Let's take and put you right here out front. There we go. All right, where are you going? You can go right there, why not? Lighter. Lighter. Nothing All right, I am going to need these. Almost 
definitely have to keep all of this stuff. Anything? No. Nothing really at the end. Alright. These are gonna go in the pouch. Come on. It's got some weight now, it's not sliding as easy. In the back. Let's use this big pouch. For the brazing tool. Those two will go right there. This will go right there. Perfect. And for the side stuff, I always keep my magnetizer with me. Gets me out of the jam all the time. First stop is the perfect place to you test the bottom of the right bag. Here. I'm under a raised house replacing a motorized damper, and it was nice grabbing everything and closing the top while walking around a dirty place. Not a crazy repair, but while I'm down here, I want to check out the bottom of the bag. Cleanup was easy since the bag does a great job staying open when you're messing with it. The feet on this bag really stand out, and the bottom is solid. Nothing comes close to the bottom when setting it down on wet ground. So will it protect your tools in harsh environments? Yes. Here's a fit system in a tight space that needs a wire harness repair. Luckily the bag doesn't take up too much room, but with this type of repair the big selling point for the bag was packing extra parts and tools that I only need for special occasions like my little torch, zip ties, and the case for heat shrink connectors. The small size of the bag was a nice surprise when I had to put it in my lap to grab stuff I needed. This was a tight fit and the shorter design of the bag actually came in handy. The majority of the work over the last two weeks has been wire harness repairs and I'm actually pretty happy I had the open top bag to keep all those extra parts in. Like I said earlier, I have been rocking the Vito MCT for years now and I love it, but trying to put spare parts in that bag and make one trip is just non-existent. Those bags are optimized for efficiency, which doesn't help when I'm trying to carry a little extra torch and a small DeWalt case full of small, small parts. Due to the recent studio remodel, I have been running this bag for about two weeks now, so here's what I think. It's a tough bag, it's definitely going to last a while, but I wouldn't use it as my primary bag, only because the main tools in here don't fit inside the pockets. What I mean by that is, my duck knife doesn't fit, my crimpers don't fit, my beater screwdriver doesn't fit, my linemen don't fit, that's a big one. And it's just stuff like that that's kind of irritating me over a little bit of time. But I will say having an open bag like this is actually really nice. Plus when all of this was down in there, I could take most of the stuff I needed extra and throw it into the bag and just carry the entire bag up. That was pretty nice. And if you don't mind not putting a tool inside of a pocket every single time, then this bag is gonna work wonders for you. One thing I noticed after the fact was these feet on the bottom are super tough. They are solid plastic. When I had that job under the house and it was constant sand and water, that kept it out, out of the water and I was actually very impressed. That was a really nice touch from Riker on that one. My plan for this bag is to take all of my testing tools, like my Jumper King, my thermal imaging camera, my bilateral laser distance measure, I want to take that and put them in this bag. And take this bag and shove it somewhere in the truck where I can easily find it no matter what it is. Because I seriously have all of these little cool tools but they're all scattered everywhere. So this is going to be my bag, my go-to bag for all the cool stuff that I get to just go in here, zip it up, and when I've come across something that needs an extra tool, something crazy, I know exactly where it's at. And that's what I think about the Riker tote bag and the Riker tool roll. I will leave comments to both in the description down below, and I'll see y'all next time.